Hey, lovely people. Welcome to my channel. As you all know, or you may not know, my name is Queen and I film about faith, food, and health. Today, we have an amazing segment called Living with Purpose. We have an amazing guest that I'm so excited to introduce to you all, and she'll be talking about her journey to medical school. So without further ado, I would like Crystal Witherspoon, Mrs. Crystal Witherspoon, to introduce herself. Hey everybody, so my name is Crystal. I am a second year medical student at UCR School of Medicine and I am excited to talk to you about my med school journey today. So thank you so much for having me, Queen. Of course, of course. You all are in for a treat because she is amazing. She has the most magnetic smile. I remember when I first saw her, so I'm just so excited for you all to, to hear her story. So let me get started with the first question. All right. So tell us a little bit about your journey to medicine. And you can start from being a pre-med or even when you were younger. Okay. You you might have me here talking all day. So just <laughs> if you need to jump in, jump in. I if will. <laughs> Follow-up questions, let me know. But um, I would say that my journey into medicine started in my senior year of high school. Um, it's funny because at that time, I didn't even know what pre-med was. I didn't even know I was considered a pre-med until somebody told me, one of my counselors told me. But what happened was I was taking a human anatomy class. Like I had the choice between taking an AP chemistry and human anatomy. So I chose human anatomy and physiology because I thought it sounded fascinating. And when I started taking the class, I found out that I was like absolutely in love with like the human body and how God created us and how all the different organ systems work together. And I was like, this is really cool. And I, I was so fascinated by the class. And around the same time, my, like my grandma and some of my family members were really starting to experience some health issues that were related to some of the chronic illnesses that they had. So she started experiencing like complications um, and they were really difficult for me to like see and watch and not be able to do anything about it. And it kind of dawned on me, like in that season, I was like, okay, okay, I really like science and I really love anatomy and I really want to be able to do something to help my family members out and people around me. And I, I believe that's when I realized that I wanted to go into the medical field and to become a doctor. So yeah, it started um, in my senior year of, of high school and it kind of took off from there. Wow. Awesome. So I have a question for you in terms of your major. What was your major when you were an undergrad? So I decided to choose physiology as my major um, based off of that class I took in high school. Um, my school offered a physio physiological sciences. So that is the major that I chose because I wanted to focus mostly on the human body and processes within the human body. Um, there are a lot of other awesome options like my bi biology and micro and chemistry and biochem, but the one that I felt like was for me was physiology. Physiology, awesome. And so um, thinking back um, as an undergrad, would you have majored in that? Again, like if I had to choose. Yeah, that, if you had the choice. Yes, um, I definitely would choose physiology again. It was difficult. It was one of the harder majors, but I couldn't see myself really choosing any other major. Like that one was the one for me. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think I would change my mind on, on choosing physiology, but I do know that a lot of people getting into medical school these days, they aren't even, they don't, they are not science majors. You don't have to be a science major yeah. to succeed, to do well on your test and to get into medical school. Like it's really important that you choose a major that is something that you're passionate about so that you could have fun in the process, that you can learn in the process. Um, and there's always room to fit in those science classes a little bit later on. So I personally, I really needed physiology. I feel like coming from high school to college was um, really a huge transition. So those extra science classes helped me to kind of be more grounded when it was time for me to start medical school. Definitely. And that's a good point you made because um, when you said 
you don't have to be a science major. That's true. And I feel, I believe a lot of people think you have to be biology major, biochemistry or physiology, but really what you um, need to do is to check off those classes mm -hmm. and then you can, you know, follow your passion. It is sometimes easier to go for a science major just because you can get those classes. Yeah. And so my second question is, did you take a gap year between undergrad and medical school? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> I did a gap year, but what happened in my um, journey was that I, so I went to university, I went to this awesome school. And for me, it was my first time taking a lot of these science classes or like ever really seeing them. So um, as a first year, kind of not knowing what to expect because I, I hadn't seen anybody go through the, the med school journey before. So it was really brand new. Like I'm so thankful that my parents always encouraged me to do, you know, whatever was on my heart and they encouraged me in every single way. Um, so I had confidence going in, but it was just funny because I didn't really know what I was getting into until I was actually in school. So when I started taking my science classes, like the chemistries and the calculus and the physics, everything was so brand new for me. Um, I really kind of struggled with that. And it took me a little bit of time to kind of to understand how to navigate being a science major, navigate office hours, navigate mm -hmm. asking questions. Like I came from a position where I did really good in high school, just graduating as valedictorian with the wow. four point plus, um, as a lot of other people in my school as well. But what I didn't know was that transition from high school to like science classes in college, um, I just was not ready for that. So even though, um, you know, I did have a good track record of being a great student, I, I really had to adjust how I was a student in college. And that, that took me a little bit of time. So um, I went through, you know, my four years of school um, and it was a process for me um, of just learning how to be a better student, learning how to study in such a way that wasn't memory intensive, but a way that was comprehension intensive, something that um, just the skills I needed to learn to be able to comprehend some more complex com concepts in science and learn how to apply into new situations. And so long story short, my, um, my science GPA was not the best. It wasn't very competitive for medical school. And my MCAT at the time was not very competitive for medical school. So I was very involved in um, like community type work and um, shadowing at hospitals and, and just doing different things within the community, but my, my grades and my MCAT weren't competitive for medical school. Um, and even though I knew that, I still applied <laughs> for medical school. So I applied during my junior year of um, college and I didn't get in anywhere. I applied to 26 schools because um, I was like, I'm kind of one of those people, I, just, I don't like giving up on things, so I'm just going to go yeah. for it anyways. Um, if I had known better, I probably would have waited a little bit to, um, to grow a little bit more and to improve my application more, but I just went for it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get into any school, so I definitely had to have, so I was kind of forced into a gap year in a sense. Um, which I was perfectly fine with because everything works out for a reason, and I later learned that I was supposed to apply to medical school that first time because when I did apply, um, there was this one school that really caught my attention. It was Loma Linda University. I had never heard of Loma Linda. I had never been in this area <laughs> before, um, but because of that school being like an awesome Christian school and at that time, um, just like in my spirituality, I kind of put it on the back burner a little bit, just being so busy with college. And I knew that going to, or when I looked into Loma Linda, I realized that like the school was like, I, I really wanted to be in a place that would help me develop spiritually and mm -hmm. academically. So although I didn't get into medical school the first time I applied, um, that school was now on my radar and that came into play a little bit later on. So um, I took, um, a, a gap year in a sense that after I didn't get into any schools and I graduated, I went ahead and applied for a master's program in public health. Wow. So that was the first thing I did in my time like out of school. Um, I, and I applied to Loma Linda and I, I got into Loma Linda and I was able to start in January. I think I graduated that June 
Mm -hmm. um, and I started in January. So it was only like about six months at the time. That was my first gap. So um, I did my master's program. And then after that, I reapplied to medical school. So I took a second gap and I worked. And I could talk about that a little later. But yeah, to answer your question, I did take um, a gap year um, on two separate occasions. Two separate occasions. Wow. So yeah, just hearing your whole journey, I'm just like, whoa. And so yeah, going back to undergrad, what would you say, um, as you think back, what would you say you would have done a little bit differently? Because I know you talked about, you know, taking classes and you adjusted from high school to college, and that was a different adjustment. Of course, you know, classes are a bit more intensive. And then, um, yeah, what would you say differently, like you would do differently um, than you did when you were an undergrad. So for our pre-med people that are watching. Okay, so one of the most important things um, for me was making sure that you connect with a mentor. Like mm -hmm. it's so important to have a mentor who is there to support you, who is either going in the same direction or knows a lot about the, the direction that you're going into. Because mm -hmm. I found that once I did connect with ment a mentor and actually several mentors, it's okay to have several different um, voices kind of speaking into your life and you get to choose which one works best for your situation. Um, so I would have made sure to have gotten a mentor much earlier so that I would have a better understanding of what I was getting into um, when I was applying to medical school and just knowing more about the medical field. So that would definitely be um, one thing that I would recommend. I would also recommend um, not being afraid to get help early. Mm. Um, I went from a place where I was very like self-sufficient and super independent and on my work all the time to a place where I was sitting in class having no idea what was happening. Yeah. It was very overwhelming. And I would stare at my homework assignments and take hours when if I had asked for help earlier or gone to office hours earlier, I would have you know, spent less time because I got help. So it's okay to need help and to seek help mm -hmm. um, while you're in school. And that's academically and emotionally too, because I went to see um, counselors while I was there just to kind of talk about being in college and just that mm -hmm. support of like, you're not alone in this. And exactly. um, so mental tours, um, getting help early, um, just trying to work on time management and balance. Um, it's so important when, especially as pre-med, we're always so busy. There's so many classes, there's so much to study, a lot of sciences. So it's, it's important to be able to learn how to balance your time at an earlier um, point of your college journey so that you learn how to um, incorporate fun things too because it's really important to take care of yourself and if you don't have time to take care of yourself because you're so busy studying all the time you're just going to get burnt out really quickly so so those are some of the things that I would um, definitely advise definitely that's great advice getting a mentor asking for help we all need help you know mm -hmm. no man is an island or no woman is an island yeah. and we need we need help so that is great and so um so i know you talked about how you know you applied and you didn't get in the first mm -hmm. time yeah. so can you tell us a little bit about that like how yeah just tell us a little bit more about that um situation okay so I tried to do the like typical path, well not typical anymore, but at that time it seemed typical. The path where you um, go through your, you know, four years or so of school and then go straight into medical school. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are striving for that. And it works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for a lot of people. You have to know um, yourself. You have to know what you are looking for. Um, for me, I that path for me would have been I applied, I think, at the end of my junior year, beginning of my senior year. And then, you know, the whole application process takes a full year. So the goal was to spend my senior year just doing applications and everything. And by the time I graduated college, I would end up um, starting medical school right away. So that was my goal. Like I had everything lined up to do that. I just didn't have the competitive grades I needed or the competitive MCAT. And also I could have used more experience in other areas as well, but I didn't realize that. And I just went for it anyways. Um, 
so that process was very new to me. I didn't, as I mentioned, I didn't exactly know what I was getting into, but I was just going to go for it anyways. Yeah. Um, and I decided to apply to about 26 schools. I just chose at that time when I applied the first time, I chose schools based on um, kind of their stats regarding will they take my MCAT? Will they take mm -hmm. my grades? Um, and I, I chose schools like within my, my tier of stats, a little bit above and a little bit below. Um, but that is not the only thing that you should base your med school choice off of. At the time, that's what I did. Um, and um, I'm glad that I did it because as I mentioned earlier, it led me to Loma Linda, but I would also recommend for you know anybody else who's doing this for the first time, don't rush into it. Um, you know, you could take your time. I know sometimes there's pressure um, depending on, you know, who you are and who you're surrounded by to, to just kind of apply and go for it. Exactly. Like, I didn't necessarily feel like I had to do it, but it's something I wanted to do. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. well, this is kind of what people do. This is what I should do, but you can't, you know, fit your journey to look like what everybody else around you looks like. Exactly. So, yeah. So if you are in a position to, that you have, you know, a great MCAT, you have, you know, great grades. If you have had like a good amount of experience in the medical field, whether you shadowed or you've researched or you've done community clinics or whatever it is, and you feel confident, I'd say go for it because, you know, med school does take a little while and you do have um, time on your side if you get through it earlier. But at the same time, it's such an intense four years. It is very important to be able to just know who you are as a person and just make sure that you're ready for the med school commitment. And sometimes that comes by taking a break after, yeah. you know, after you graduate from college to do a gap year, to work, to travel, to do family related things, um, to research, whatever it is. Sometimes that, that gap year is really important and really beneficial. And you come into med school rested from you exactly. know, the break that you took and just ready to, to you know, go for it at that point in time. Yeah, that that break period is definitely necessary. I know a lot of people um, before they go into med school, they're like, should I study? Should I do X, Y, Z? Yeah. You have a lot of time to study in medical definitely. school. <laughs> so definitely take that break. And so I have a, a follow-up question. So yeah. during um, your pre-med years, what type of extracurricular activities did you do? And did you go to any conferences? So you could take it one by one. Okay, so... The extracurricular activities I was involved in, I had quite a few. Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, but I think the one I was most involved in was not medical related at all. I was in the marching band. Wow. So, I played French horn and I was with the band people and I got to go to football games and really, because I mean, music is one of my passions and playing French horn is one of my passions. So I found that there was a way to incorporate that into my college life. And that was what helped me find that balance of mm -hmm. fun and something that's important to me, but also like I'm here for school and I was able to do both. So that was always a nice break for me. So that was one thing I did for three years. Um, another like non-medical thing I did, I was an RA for one year. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then um, I was also involved in a, like a shadowing program. It was called Care Extenders. Okay. Um, where, where you, have you heard of that? Yeah, clinical care extenders. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, yeah, so um, it's like this program where it allows undergrad students to kind of rotate through different departments of the hospital. I was in LA, so I was different parts of the hospital, and you kind of get assigned to different clinics, and you get to see what the doctors and the nurses and all the staff are doing, and you get to interact with patients, and it's just your, it was my first time being super exposed to what does medicine look like, at least from my point of view, what does it look like? So I did care extenders for, I think two full years. Um, I was also involved in um, an organization called Happy Feet. So this was like a homeless outreach and it was really awesome. Um, unfortunately, there's a huge homeless population in LA so our school tried to, you know, be there um, in any way that we could. So this particular organization helped to bring, uh, provide like foot care 
and healthcare to anybody who is of need of those services along with like toiletries and shoes. And so it was a really um, humbling and hands-on um, active, like I guess extracurricular that I was involved in maybe once a month or so, we'd go to certain locations and um, interact with this, this crowd. So this was another thing that I was able to do while I was an undergrad. So I had the care extenders, I had this um, you know, homeless outreach um, I was able to go on a medical mission trip as well. Oh, wow. So um, I went to, it's with an organization called Global Medical Brigades, and they do trips all the time to a lot of different countries. I, in this particular case, I went to Panama. And um, when we went there, we partnered, like our doctors who came partnered with the doctors from Panama, because you don't want to just go somewhere and just yeah. bring your own medicine and you don't even know what you're doing is going to be helpful or sustainable. So um, it was this organization partnered with the, the local doctors and we were just able to help out with the clinics. We were able to see different things. We were able to um, just kind of interact with a totally new group of people. And the area that we went was a really kind of rural and underdeveloped area. So it was probably five hours away from the main city. Um, and there is over 10,000 people, one hospital and three doctors. Wow. So people weren't really going to see the doctor unless it was something urgent. So it was, they found it helpful when groups of, you know, students and doctors came to be able to, um, you know, help with whatever services they, they were in need of. So that was also something else that I did. And I was in um, like an honor society. So that also came with, um, it helped us to network and connect with other students and mentors and people in the field. And also allowed us to do like different um, community activities as well. So those were a few of the, um, I guess, extracurriculars that I regularly participated in when I was an undergrad. Awesome. Wow. So you were very involved as an um, undergraduate. And I like the point that you made that you didn't just do all medical, medically related mm -hmm. extracurriculars. Yeah. You were able to find that balance with, you know, being in the marching band. So, mm -hmm. you know, as a pre-med student, you know, if you're watching, you don't have to just do, you know, shadowing, et cetera, et cetera. You can be involved with things that you love if it's you know singing, if it's dancing, definitely do what you're passionate about as well. And so another question, did you go to any conferences as a pre-med student? I'm trying to think if I went to any conferences off the top of my head. Um, the fact that I don't remember any, I don't, I don't think yeah, I really okay. did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. And, and I mean, you don't have to, but I was just yeah. wondering, like, did you go to any? Well, yeah, that's fine. And then um, in terms of, so yeah, you took us on a journey of um, being an undergrad, some of the um, extracur extracurricular activities that you're involved in. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. like, and um, so when you applied, you said you didn't get in. How, like, what motivated you to do it again? Like, what was that motivation? Or actually, let me take a step back. How did you cope with that? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I was initially like very disappointed because <laughs> it's like one thing, it, it, it was disappointing because I am applying to all these schools. Eventually I applied to more, but at the time though, 26 schools was definitely a lot of schools. And I felt like I was supposed to apply to medical school. So I was confident like something would come out of it. But it's funny like how God works because the thing that you might be expecting to come out of a situation may not be what he has planned for you, but you're still supposed to go through it. And because I was confident in that, I knew that I was supposed to go through the process. I knew that something good would come out of it. So I feel like that kept, gave me comfort in applying, um, even though it's very disappointing, you know, receiving rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection sure. letter, um, that part is hard, but I was still very hopeful for some reason that I can't really explain <laughs> throughout the process. Um, and I remember like just a quick uh, story, just when mm -hmm. I was graduating from high school, 
uh, this PE teacher that I've never had, she came up to me and she gave me a gift. And this gift was a bracelet. And the bracelet had this verse on it, Jeremiah 29, 11. And the bracelet just said, I know the plans I have for you. And this, you know, one of the scriptures in the Bible. And I, you know, I never even read that scripture before. I wasn't aware of it, but it's so funny because I took that bracelet with me to college and that like, just knowing that God had a plan for me, um, got me through every single hardship that I, that I experienced as a college student. Um, and that included my med school journey. I was like, okay, well, I know that God has a plan for me. And I know that I didn't just come up with this out of nowhere, becoming a doctor. It's not like I've, I've really seen that around me. So I just had this confidence that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna go for it and do the best I can. And even though in that period of time, I, I didn't get into any school, I still like maintained like my hope knowing that you know, God has a plan for me. This wasn't for nothing. And it, and it really wasn't because it brought me to Loma Linda and my whole life, you know, transformed and changed once I got to Loma Linda. So that's another part of the story. But I just, just holding on to like the hope that I had that, you know, God was with me and he had plans for me and my journey is not in vain. And this is a learning mm -hmm. process that helped carry me through applying um, to medical school the first time and even even though I didn't get in anywhere I was like okay well that just means that you know I, there has to be an adjustment and later on I realized you know what everything was intended for but at the time I was like okay well okay what's next how do I how do I do this where how do I move forward I'm going to try this again I just need to know I know I need to improve somewhere so that was my mentality coming out of not getting into anywhere wow that like gave me chills. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, that's just like, that is also my favorite verse because God has a plan for you and a purpose. And yeah. that's so awesome that you held on to it. Yeah. You held on to it and ran. Like you didn't let it uh, make you stay down. Mm -hmm. You got up and you said, you know what? God has a plan for me. I'm going to keep moving forward. And that is an awesome message. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And so can you take us a little bit on your journey um, during your gap year? And how many gap years did you take? So, um, so after I graduated from college, I took the six months off as I applied to Loma Linda um, for my master's program in public health. And just a little background, the reason why I chose public health was because when I did go to Panama, I was a part of a, a public health committee. I didn't even know what public health was at the time but we were responsible for hanging out with the kids and teaching them about like hygiene and washing your hands, how to wash your hands properly and how to choose like fruits and vegetables that were available there that helped you with the balanced diet. And I think kind of growing up in the United States, at least for me, um, those were things that were regularly taught. Mm -hmm. That's something that you kind of grow up doing and knowing a little bit about. But what I didn't realize was that when you leave the United States, um, you know, there's so many other countries and continents and cultures and people across the world that grow up differently from you. And I mean, I did have a tiny bit of exposure to that because I had a, my, my dad was in the military, so we traveled a lot. And we moved every three or four years. And I didn't always live in the United States. I lived overseas sometimes. But in a medical capacity, um, going to Panama and just seeing the circumstances, it was more of like an indig indigenous community. So everything was very traditional and colorful and amazing. And people were so happy. Um, but they had, there were some differences in how people managed their health based on what they had access to and what information they had. Mm -hmm. um, and not everything is a, a conscious choice because sometimes you know people don't have access to the medical care and resources and medications and even the food and the water that we do in the United States. So um, just being a part of that public health committee opened my eyes to what life was like in a place that doesn't have access to all the resources that I have access to. And I, I was realizing the importance of, you know, how public health could play a role in in medicine. Even even here in the United States, we're not we're definitely not perfect in the United States, and there's a lot of room for improvement. 
um, within our own community, within the Inland Empire. You know, that's why I'm drawn to being here. But public health, I chose public health because of the exposure that I received um, on my trip in, in Panama and also with the outreach that I was, I was doing with um, some of the homeless communities when we were learning about, you know, access to having a safe home and safe environment and to have food regularly and to have access to showers and clean water regularly. Like that's an issue even in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. So those, um, I guess, extracurriculars kind of highlighted the importance of public health, which is so very broad, but yeah. I saw how um, it could be incorporated into the medical field. The medical field tends to focus on treating um, individuals, and that's very important. Public health focuses on a little bit more on preventing illnesses from happening, and it focuses on what are trends across the whole population, like how does this disease play out on this population versus that population. What can we do to change that? What can we do to fix that? What can we, what can we research to see how we can improve, you know, this medicine or this public health in the future? So, I was drawn to public health, and I definitely wanted to learn more about it. So a lot of people try to decide what they want to do in a gap year. Some people work for the full year. Some people get involved in research for the full year. Um, some people you know, travel and, and go on trips, mission trips or family trips. Um, but for me, I wanted to, and some people do a post back and I, I kind of did a version of a post back a little bit later on after Loma Linda. So I could get to that a little later too. But for me, I wanted to, I chose a master's in public health. It was a two year program. I chose research epidemiology as my sub major because I didn't really have much research experience at all. And I figured that I wanted to at least get exposure to research so that when I go into medical school, I would know if it's something that I would wanna do as a doctor or not. Um, so, so I took those six months, I applied to um, Loma Linda, I got into the program, and then I took two years um, doing my master's in public health. And in the process, um, I was exposed to so many things. I was exposed to um, more of the Inland Empire community um, and the different you know, issues that we have and gaps that we have in healthcare and knowledge here. Um, I was also exposed to um, how doctors can combine public health and medicine. Um, and I was also had the opportunity to, to work in a project. So this is how I met Queen, everybody. We were paired <laughs> on a project together with an awesome mentor. Yes. <laughs> um, and that just gave us so much room to grow and get to know our community and get to serve. Um, we were helping people get enrolled in health insurance, Medi-Cal, for those who didn't have any insurance. And um, our project specifically targeted populations that were harder to reach than the average population. So we worked really hard with other amazing community organizations and the county to be able to um, help make sure healthcare was accessible to nearly everybody in our, our county. So. Um, and that just transitions me into my next gap year because I was just gonna mention that after I finished at Loma Linda, after I finished my second year, that's when I decided to apply for medical school again. Awesome. Um, so I took the year after that to study um, for my MCAT, just to take it again because I needed a fresh score and to prepare my application. So I took a gap year after my master's program. And in the meantime, I worked full time with that, that um, grant funded project that was a part of Loma Linda University. So that is, that's, that's what I did um, after my master's program. So gap wow. year part one or six months and then um, full gap year to work and apply to medical school after gaining more experience. Awesome. Wow. And so I have another question. So you took your gap years mm -hmm. and so then you applied. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you did a lot up until that second application. Would you say there's anything else that you did differently when you applied the second time? Okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of improvement between my first application and my second application. Um, for starters, because I was in a master's program, I kind of had a new opportunity to do better in school. Um, my, my progress in undergrad was this upward climb. 
And by the end of my four years, I had a pretty good grasp on how to be a science student, how to be a student in general, how to find balance. So thankfully I was able to carry that into my master's program. So I did really well in all of my classes and I had a huge jump in my GPA. Um, schools don't always see the GPAs as equal, but anything that you do, any other class that you take, especially at a graduate level, will hold weight. So I believe that I went from like B average in undergrad um, to nearly 4.0, I think I had 3.9. So that really helped me when school saw, okay, she took these, she took public health classes, there's mm-hmm. science incorporated into that. Uh, these are graduate level classes. It looks like she has improved from undergrad to graduate school. So that was one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I took my MCAT and I jumped up in score. So that helped me as well. Uh, I went from like maybe below average when I first took it to at least at the average, at least. Mm -hmm. So that was very helpful for me. So that was the grades in the MCAT. And schools do really hold those um, with a lot of weight. Um, Other schools like UCR, they they hold those that way, but they also take into consideration every other aspect of you is a very holistic approach. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. So, um, but some of the first things that schools look at because so many people apply to med school is like, okay, how's their MCAT? How's their grades? Those are very important. So it's just important to, to know that going in to do, be, do the best that you can. Um, so I did that. And then on top of that, I, I had an extra year of clinical experience. When I applied the first time, I had only been doing care extenders in the hospital for, I guess, a year. Um, but by the time I applied the second time, I had done that for two years, at least two years. I think it was just like 300 hours or so. Um, and then on top of that, I continued community outreach and like homeless outreach. So I was in Loma Linda now and in San Bernardino, there was a huge opportunity for more outreach. So I connected. And then another thing I did to go with this, I made sure I connected with the Loma Linda Medical School Whoa. students um and organizations so that I had the best chance of you know being up close to seeing what med school is like and being involved and already kind of knowing people and knowing mentors in the medical school so that would kind of help me if you know if it was meant for me to go to Loma Linda so um I was a part of another uh outreach and this time I took on more leadership positions um Mm -hmm. I was able to like create a position, like a public health position. There was this organization in Loma Linda um, School of Medicine called Street Medicine. And the medical students provided medical care to anybody who was basically living on the streets or in a shelter or anybody who needed care. And they, they had an attending physician. It's cool, UCR does that as well. But since I was going to Loma Linda, I, would just, I just knew what was going on in Loma Linda. So mm-hmm. I wasn't able to help provide care because I was a medical student. So I. I asked them if I could create a position for public health yeah. students to provide like information about different you know, conditions like diabetes and hypertension and um, just different things of that nature. So it, it takes a little bit of innovation sometimes if there's not a position for you and if there's an opportunity for you to make a position, yeah. make that position because at least you're doing something that you love and that you're passionate about and that's gonna impact the people around you. That's the most important thing. But that also was something that helped me um, grow in my journey of becoming more aware of the medical field. So that was something that helped me as well. Um, just taking on different leadership positions, like little stu- student council here and you know different things like that. Um, you just kind of make sure that you're doing these things because you actually want to do these things. You don't want to fill up a checklist for your application exactly. <laughs> or it brings you out. And there's like the admissions could tell when you're doing something that you love versus doing something that you're trying to fill out on your application. So to answer your question, um, just I, I improved on my MCAT, I improved on my grades, I continued my, con- my community or my hospital shadowing, I continued my community outreach in, in several different ways, even with my church, they did outreach. So I did outreach with my church, like food distribution and things like oh, that. Yeah. So, um, and, then I, and then I got a job. So I was working with um, our organization that we were a part of, and that counted as a part-time job while I was in school being able to help out plan health fairs and health events to make sure that people could come and get signed up in Medi-Cal, they don't have health insurance. So that was really huge for me. It was life-changing for me. And it was something that really helped, um, I believe, helped me with my application into medical school because that was something that was really noticed. I didn't do it for, <laughs> for that purpose, but it was something that the position um, kind of 
fell into my lap and I was able to take that opportunity to, to work. So I was working part-time and then when I finished the program, I was able to start working full-time in that position of community health outreach. So that was something else that I did that I feel like played a huge role in the how my application looked from the first time to the second time. Wonderful. Yeah. So yes, you did a lot of changes, which is good because sometimes people just think I'm going to apply again and don't make any changes. You have to make changes. And yeah. it's good that you identified that. And you made a lot of great changes and even getting your master's um, in public health. That's a huge, you know, bonus that you had. Um, and oh, sorry, so one more thing I forgot to mention that I, something else that I did is I got involved in research. Like I went from having barely any research experience on my first application to having a ton more experience. I was involved in two projects, um, just research on, and th this was like public health research. There's different types of research you could do, like bench research and wet lab research. Um, I did public health research, epidemiology research. So I was my, I guess my research was focusing on trends across the population. One was the cancer research project in the Inland Empire. Um, since Loma Linda was considered a blue zone, we wanted to see what the cancer incidence and prevalence was in Loma Linda compared to other um, surrounding areas. And then I also did a research project with um, diabetes and pregnancy. And I was able to get that position because like, if you want to do research, you usually have to reach out to um, a doctor or a faculty member or, you know, a teacher, professor who's doing a project that you're interested in. You reach out to them, you send them an email, see who responds to you. And that's a great way to get introduced into research. So I did that with Loma Linda with one of the doctors who was one of my mentors at Loma Linda. And I was able to jump on to one of her projects and um, with diabetes and pregnancy among high risk um, mothers. So that was something else I did. I added research to my application. So that also helped me a lot. Wow. Yeah. And I, I like the point that you made that, you know, it was public health research. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, you don't have to do um, biology research or wet lab or bench research, yeah. do what you're passionate about, because at the end of the day, you're going to get those skills that you need or that you get from doing research. So mm -hmm. do something you're passionate about. So that's a really great point that you made. And so fast forward, tell us a little bit about your acceptance, your reaction, and just a little bit about that. Cause I know I don't want to take too much of your time. She's a med student, but <laughs> I just wanted to know a little bit about your um, acceptance um, experience. So this is also a unique experience. Like I feel like everything a part of my journey was not normal or not what <laughs> the people around me look like. This was actually my, the most exciting part for me. It was amazing. Um, and my acceptance wasn't like everybody else's acceptance either. So I applied to medical school after my, I finished my two year program and master's in public health. I applied to medical school a second time, as I mentioned. This time I applied to 40, 41 schools. I wanted to up it up a notch. I did my research on each school. I was like, okay, what is their mission? What, um, what is their environment? What do they focus on? Are they more community-based? Are they research-based? Because I'm more community-based and I, I wanted to make sure I was going to a school that cared about um, helping people who didn't have as much access to, to medicine and, and care as the people around them. So those were important things. So this time when I applied, I looked at the missions of the school to make sure I was a good fit and the school was a good fit for me because you don't want to end up somewhere that you're going to be completely miserable and unhappy because you're not a fit for the school or the school doesn't align with what you see yourself doing as a physician. So I applied to 41 different schools across the country. I wide net, I cast it out wide. Um, and in the process, I felt like it was going well initially. And then you kind of start having a little doubt as you go on because I applied to 41 schools and I received 38 secondary applications. So you, you send out your first application, goes to all the schools. Um, if the school likes you or nowadays they're automatically giving you a second application. Yeah. So I did 38 secondaries and my 38 secondaries, I had one interview. <laughs> um, and I feel like my story is a little different from people around me. Cause like some people were like, I had five interviews. I had four mm -hmm. interviews. Like, but I had to like, just know that, you know, I was on my own unique path that God called specifically for me that nobody else was going to 
you know, be able to accomplish what God has for me to accomplish. So I can't be paying attention to what's going on in other people's lanes. I just need to stay in my lane, do yeah. what God is calling me to do. And I just took that confidence into the application process. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had one interview and the interview wasn't even the school that I'm in right now. It's, it was um, an interview in New York. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I was like, wow, okay, it's the only interview. And then the funny thing is, like, I didn't even receive the initial invitation interview um, email. I received the email saying, oh, because you didn't respond to your last email, we have to cancel your interview. And I was like, what do you mean? I never even got an email. <laughs> so I emailed them. I was like, you know, I'm so sorry. I don't believe I received the email. And long story short, I had an interview in New York. And it was awesome. I have some family in New York and New Jersey. It was a great experience um, going to my very first medical school interview and just just being more prepared this time and just knowing what I wanted to, to do and be as a physician. I had like my vision had been so expanded after I had more experience in the field and I knew specifically how I envisioned myself as a doctor. It wasn't like, oh, I just want to be a doctor. It was like, I know I want to be a doctor for this group of people mm -hmm. and I want to be doing this specific things. I want to make sure I'm able to interact with the community and do a little research on this. Like I had a vision. So that helped me going into this application wow. cycle. Um, so I interviewed at New York and I got waitlisted at the specific school. Um, meanwhile, I was, you know, not receiving any other interviews. So I was like getting a little nervous. I was like, okay, at least I had this one. I heard that that school takes a lot of people. Um, and I was really hoping to be able to go to either Loma Linda University School of Medicine or UC Riverside School of Medicine. Those are my top two. I really wanted to go to UCR, but I knew that they only took a handful of people, maybe 60, 70 at a time. So I was like, I don't know how my chances are of getting into school, but like, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. The Loma Linda, I felt like I had a better chance of getting into um, because I was a Loma Linda student in a different school and I was very involved in um, the Loma Linda school system. But long story short, I received that interview uh, in New York and slowly but surely rejections started coming in, including my Loma Linda rejection. So I was like, oh man, like, it was very disappointing because um, I was waiting for that one, but I was like, okay, there's still other schools. Um, it was kind of getting a little late in the cycle too. And I hadn't heard from UCR, UC Riverside. So I ended up emailing them and they told me their interview cycle was over as well. And I was like, well, I guess I might be going to New York and that's okay, <laughs> but I was waitlisted. So it was like a process of being in suspense for months. I feel yeah. like getting, like waiting to get into medical school for me was almost harder than being in medical school because now wow. it's like, I've waited all this time to finally learn these things and be in medical school. So I'm like excited to be here. And it's such an awesome opportunity and it's so hard to get in. Not everybody gets to get in. So it's such a privilege for me to be here. Um, but just the, that application process and that waiting, that waiting period, like I really just have to trust God because I was like, okay, if you're calling me to do this, which I knew that he was, you're going to provide a way for me to, to get there. I don't know what that looks like. And in the natural, when I'm looking at my emails, it's not looking good, but I was believing God that I had faith that he had planned for me and, mm. you know, he was going to carry it out. Um, there's this verse that I was holding on to, um, be confident, being confident that he who started a good work in me is faithful to carry it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So I knew that God planted the seed mm. in me to become a doctor. And I had to have faith that God was going to carry that to completion because I knew that it was my calling. So I was able to hold on to that through yeah. the application process. And long story short, I, um, I didn't get into the schools, any of the schools. Um, however, at the very end of the cycle, like in May, UC Riverside reached out to me wow. with this letter. And I thought this letter was fake because I was like, what is, what is this? Like, I'm, I'm not understanding what this is. But the letter is basically saying, um, we want to interview you, not for this school year, but for next school year. Hmm. We like you as an applicant, but we saw, what, this is me paraphrasing. We like you, we think you have a lot of potential, um, but we saw that you had a little rocky start when you're taking your science classes in undergrad. So we want to conditionally um, admit you if your interview goes well. And that led me into the UCR Riverside, the UC Riverside School of Medicine conditional admission program. I didn't even know it existed. So this is how I knew that God was like 
answering my my prayer and that God is faithful because he opened a back door for me that I had no idea even existed. And it wasn't anything that I thought it was going to be. So basically I was, it's like the post back program, but you actually physically applied to a post back program. This was something that since I applied to medical school and because um, they saw something in me, they invited me to their conditional admission program, which is basically one year of classes. There were conditions, like I had to do well in these classes in order to be admitted to the school. And as long as I reached that certain you know, GPA and grades, um, I was automatically admitted into the medical school. So I did a regular medical school interview a week or two later. And I was so thankful to find out that I was, I, I was accepted into the conditional admission program. So that for me was like a pre-acceptance. And it was just such a, it was such a relief. I had never experienced anything like that in my life. I was just so excited that like, I'm finally like this much closer to wow. becoming a doctor. Like I'm this much closer to being able to start medical school. School. And I was just so thankful to God and just like to everybody around me. And that one year happened to be such a blessing. Like it was better for me that I had that one year to prepare for medical yeah. school than for me to start medical school immediately. Because of course, in the back of your mind, it's like, oh, that could have been an admission. Like, what if I had just started medical school? But in that year, like I knew that God had different plans for me because I was able to get married in that year. Like, I had the time to plan a wedding, you know, with my yeah. my now husband, and I don't know how I would have been able to do that as a medical student, the way I was able to do that with that conditional admission year. We were able to, you know, get a home and, and move into our home together after we were married, and moving is a lot. You know, it's a huge process, especially when you're moving into a, a house, so in that conditional admission year, I was taking these science classes, and I was, um, you know, everything was going well, but I also had time for life to happen, and I didn't see that up front, but God saw that for me and he allowed for me to have that year so that I could do these amazing other things that he also wanted me to do before mm -hmm. really starting medical school. And that conditional admission year went really well. Um, I was able to take science classes that I've never taken before and classes that really helped me as a first year medical student. And I was able to carry on those skills of being a better student and you know, time management and balance and asking for help and, and learning how to um, you know, be a science student. I was able to take those skills and, and just do really well in my conditional admission year. Um, just thankful to God for that. And by the end of the year, they gave me a letter saying you were officially admitted to UC Riverside School of Medicine. So wow. that was like, it was just like, that was official. And that was such an amazing um, moment to receive that letter and know that it was official after that journey that I had been on for yeah. Like, for years, for years, it finally happened. So that was a little bit about like my my journey into medical school. And it was very non-traditional, but I just guarantee you that, you know, if you're trusting God for something and he's calling you to something, he's going to take care of you along the way and he's going to see it through. You just got to trust him and just try to do the best that you can in the meantime by holding on to your faith and he answered that, you know, that prayer and, you know, my whole family got to celebrate. We expect, I say with my parents and my husband, we got into medical school because everybody and all my family, aunts and uncles, wow. like everybody who was with me in that journey, but encouraging me the whole time. It's like, it took a whole village. So I was like, hey, guys, we made it, we made it. And everybody's like there with me. And it's just really amazing. So my journey doesn't look like anybody else's journey that I, you know, for my, my classmates and the people I encounter, it's very different. You know, there have been times where I was like a little bit embarrassed about, you know, different parts of, because, you know, in some senses I, I failed at certain things. That's why um, I didn't get in immediately. But at the same time, um, each like failure was like something that would help me grow and help me overcome. And I didn't, I honestly didn't have what I needed and what it took for me to be in medical school or a medical student at the time that I applied initially, I was not ready. I didn't even know what I was getting into. I didn't know as much about the field that I knew when I applied the second time around. I wasn't ready and I didn't know that. I'm so thankful that I didn't even get in the first time because um, it just opened up opportunities for me to, to grow as a person. Um, I started, I think I started college when I was like, 17 so I was young yeah. and by the time like now I'm 
27, my second year. So by the time I started medical school, I was 25, 26 or so. And a lot of personal growth had happened in that time. A lot of spiritual growth, a tremendous mm. amount of spiritual growth had happened in that time. And that was so necessary for who I am and who God is calling me to be. Um, my, my confidence grew at that time because I was grounded in who I was and knowing who I am as a person, as a child of God. And just, you know, you know, on my journey of where I am and emotional growth, you know, physical growth like getting healthier having a different outlook on life just being more mature so I'm really glad that I didn't make it the first time around because all that stuff needed to happen um, for me to get to where I needed to be Loma Linda and UCR, UCR wouldn't have been on my radar if I didn't get into med school the first time around because I didn't get in I was brought to Loma Linda when I came to Loma Linda I met some really amazing people like yourself mm. and our friend Tiffany and you know Dr. Mason, I know awesome people yeah. um that God placed in my life I was able to get plugged into an awesome church and just grow spiritually I was able to meet my future husband Matt my now husband wow. <laughs> at the time like all these life things needed to happen and they would never have happened if I didn't apply that first time and I didn't get exposed to Loma Linda so university so I just keep mentioning that because like a lot of things happened in my life that were so important to my journey into medical school and my experience at Loma Linda and in San Bernardino helped me to get into UC Riverside. Um, so none of this, you know, everything happens for a reason and yes. all of things work together for good. So I, I could see that God used things that seemed like bad or as a failure to me to work it to something that was absolutely amazing that only he had in store for me. Um, so that was my journey into UCR School of Medicine. I'm so thankful for the entire journey, everything, the ups and the downs. Um, I just had to grow through it and become, you know, better, more well-rounded person in the process. But now I'm finally here. So I'm really thankful. Wow. <laughs> Amazing journey. I, you know, God just took control of this whole interview <laughs> because <laughs> it's just amazing from start to finish just hearing your story and um, how you held on to your faith in God and Christ and how you just, you, you ran with what he told you with the vision he gave you. And that is just amazing. I had a question, you know, um, how does faith play a role, but you already inter <laughs> interwove it into your whole <laughs> interview. And that is amazing. And that is, you know, what this is all about, you know, how you're living with purpose and, I don't know, I'm just fascinated by your story. I didn't know all of, you know, the bits and pieces, but thank you so much for sharing. And um, to wrap it up, what advice would you give to, to someone that's watching this that is, you know, kind of discouraged because people have, you know, told them you, you don't, you, you shouldn't apply to medical school. Yeah. You know, like what is some, what is one piece of advice you would give to someone watching this that's kind of discouraged on their journey to medical school? Yeah, I would say that if you believe that it's your dream to go to medical school and it's your calling to go to medical school to become a doctor, don't let anybody talk you out of that. You know, if that is the dream that God put on your heart, to, to be able to serve in such an amazing capacity. You can't um, let people take that away from you, even if it looks impossible in the moment, because what is impossible with us is completely possible with God. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice would be to know that you are on your own specific journey. Mm -hmm. You are in your own lane, your own path. You're running your own race in life, you and God. And your journey does not need to look like the journey of the people around you. When I was I was in school, people were getting acceptances here. They were in medical school there. By the time I was like starting my master's, they're already like halfway through with, or I guess finishing. They're you know halfway through with medical school already. By the time I was finishing my master's, they're graduating and going to residency. Mm -hmm. But you get so bogged down by focusing on the details of other people's lives. And that's not meant for you, you know? God has something in store specifically for you. So you can't focus on the people around you. Of course, listen to your mentors and, and take in everything that's good, that works for you. But you have to remember, like, don't compare yourself to other mm -hmm. people. Don't compare yourself. Just do what you need to do to get there. And it's going to look different for you than it does for other people. But just stay encouraged that, you know, God is starting something in your heart. 
and um, you're trusting him with it, he's going to carry that to completion, whether it look like what you think is gonna look like or whether it turns into something else. You just gotta trust God in the process. Um, and just know that, you know, he has a specific calling and purpose that only you can carry out. So just stay encouraged in that. Don't give up um, and just continue to try to press into whatever God has in store for you um, in order to be sure and aware of like your calling and your purpose. So that is what I would say. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Crystal. Um, I know I was blessed by this and I pray that you know, everyone that's watching will be blessed by your story. And um, Crystal kindly will be providing her, you know, information so that you all, if you want to contact her, it'll be in the description below. Please do. I know like her story is very encouraging. So please feel free to reach out. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you'll be notified for the next Living With Purpose episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, God's blessings always.